So this is Danny Flexen here for seconds. Uh, delighted to be joined by our undefeated US heavyweight Jeremiah Milton, aka Dreamland, of course. Great to have you on the channel again. How's everything going? Yeah, no, everything's solid, man. I'm out here in Vegas. Uh, just been taking care of myself, um, staying in shape, staying ready for the new possibilities. And with that in mind, we haven't seen you in uh, competitive action since last summer. What, what's been going on? Have there been fights, possibilities, talks and so on? Uh, unfortunately, there was a lot of changes being made, um, you know, as far as management and promotional issues go. Um, you know, not to say that these guys were doing something wrong. It's just, um, you know, the business of boxing can really slow you down sometimes. So what's the situation with that now? Do you have a, a fresh team? No, um, as of last week, I'm promotional free, um, management free, uh, you know, began to work close with uh, Bill Haney and those guys. We kind of started something, but obviously there's a lot going on with them right now. Um, so I'm not really sure where that goes or, you know, what their replan or their focus is. Uh, but yeah, you know, I'm just out here doing my thing. Is it frustrating to kind of be on the shelf because you are working hard, you are undefeated, young relatively for the for the uh, division as well, and you're not catching a break at the moment? Yeah, yeah, that's that's tough, dog. It's like, um, you know, you get so close every time and then something else just keeps popping up. And, you know, um, I've been in like a lot of the top camps, um, you know, just helping a lot of guys out. So the plan has just been to refocus myself um, come back uh, and stay in Vegas and make sure I'm getting everything set up for me. Um, maybe not spar around so much just because, um, you know, I've been in the camps with some of the top guys. And you think about it, like I've been making guys millions of dollars, man. And it's just like, man, where does my opportunity come from? I mean, with that in mind, how much, if at all, do you benefit from those camps? Because you're there, you're being brought in to help them. Do you get much out of it? Are there anyone, any particular camp where you felt like you gained? I mean, you gain experience, you know what I'm saying? And then a little clout, you know, you take pictures with guys and stuff like that. But life goes on. Um, it's mainly for me, it's all about, you know, make sure I can t take care of my bills and my finances here um, when I'm not in the ring. Uh, so, of course, you know, I, I decided to, you know, go all in with boxing and I don't work a job and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just a professional fighter, you know what I'm saying, at, at the end of the day. So, um, you know, things have to stretch whenever you're not in the ring. And like I said, it's a path that I chose just so that I can be amongst the best. It's like you can't have one foot in, one foot out. Um, you know, I believe my decisions, you know what I'm saying, will ultimately lead me to where I want to be eventually. Um, but you got to be ready for the opportunities. Have any of those camps you feel ever worked against you and that word gets around just how good you are and maybe that stops you getting fights sometimes? Yeah, I believe. I believe that all factors in, you know what I'm saying, as far as like, you know, they wouldn't be giving me the call back if I wasn't so great, you know. Um, thing about it is I go out to these camps, I'm not getting beat up, I'm not getting hurt. You know, I'm giving them, you know, my all so that they can get ready for the fights and, you know, it's just crazy because, like, so many people, they, they stay calling me like, yo, man, in fact, some of y'all don't even need to call me no more, like, you know. Do you ever get a sense of pride when they go out and achieve one of those big victories and you feel you've played a part in it? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I You know what I'm saying? You can't be in camp with a guy and, you know, not kind of wanting to win. You know, I've been in camp with guys that have fought each other. Um, you know, so I try to stay out of it sometimes when it comes to that. Um, but, you know, you put in all that work with somebody, you want to see them, you know, either give their best or, you know, not be hurt out there. So, yeah, you know, it feels like, okay, I'm, I'm the I'm the, I'm the hit man for hire. You feel me? I'm in the background kind of getting shit done. But, you know, it's all good. You said you've been in camp with guys who then ended up fighting each other. Is there kind of an unwritten rule that they don't ask about the other experience or do they ask you sometimes, you know, what was the other guy like? You know, sometimes it's casual talk, but I, I don't believe, um, you know, anybody has ever like benefited off of like, oh, OK, like anything I could tell them, you know, 
Because, I mean, you know, everybody has the internet and, you know, you can see a guy fight and a, a guy can say, oh, I'm going to do this in the fight. And most of the time, they're just going to look exactly like they did, you know, unless they have been making improvements or strides. And, you know, that, that'll be for the fighter to find out on the night. Out of all the heavyweights you have worked with, we'll talk a bit more about your own ambitions in a minute, but out of all the different camps you've been in, you can name one, two, three, up to you, but who's impressed you? Who have you been impressed with that's either coming up alongside you or that's already there at the top? Um, You know, I believe a lot of these guys, they possess um, their own capabilities, a lot of the same things. Um, You know, at the top, let's say just the top 10, top 15 of heavyweights, you know, more likely they're top 10. These guys are marginally different you know they got assets you know that have also brought them as far as they've come but like you know on any given night you know what I'm saying they could possibly go out there and you know match up well with each other I don't know I feel like whenever they hit a certain point of their career you know what I'm saying they're only aiming to stay amongst those other names and they really can't get up for anything beneath that um, but yeah, I mean, they're phenomenal in their own way, but um, I, I would say maybe like, um, maybe Frank Sanchez, just because like, you know, he's still trying to prove something as as far as like, um, you know, trying to stay in that top mix. And yeah, I mean, I mean, maybe there, maybe there. Let me ask you, if you could kind of plot out your own perfect route to where you want to get to. Who and what would that include? Who are the kind of the names on your hit list? Uh, Jared Anderson. You know, I feel like, you know, just the the business of boxing. They've they've just touted him as like the leader of America, and it's like, yo, how exactly is that right? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, you know, he's gone in there and fought guys that never punched him back, and you know, it's just really good matchmaking. You know, they they find somebody overseas you know, that comes in and, you know, just kind of collects the money. And then, you know, I, I already knew when he fought Charles Martin because I've, I've been in Charles' camps. I've sparred with Charles. I was kind of sparring with Charles leading up to that fight. And I, and I just know who Charles is, you know, the person. I knew he would fight him back and he wouldn't be a soft touch. And, um, you know, that might be one of his harder fights outside of Kingsley eBay, who – hadn't had the proper boxing experience at the time. You know, this guy was a first year pro just come out of nowhere. Um, you know, no amateur experience, didn't possess the jab, um, a lot of different things. But but these guys, you know, they they made it tough for him because they decided to fight him back. You know, I think he is, you know, good at what he does and people see like, okay, he's running his hands, but it's not it's not really like transitioning too well right now. Um, if you ask me, I mean, the record is there, but, you know, I don't know. And then you got a guy like Charles Martin who's been calling for the top guys. I feel like they struggle to get up for a fight that's beneath them. You know, they take it, but, like, why don't he fight somebody? This is the thing about boxing. Everybody's like, oh, well, you guys both need to do this or do that, but shouldn't guys see each other on the way up sometimes too, you know? And now they're trying to put him in there with Deontay Wilder, and, you know, I feel like he gets hurt in that fight. But... You know, possibly, who knows? He might outbox Wilder if Wilder's just not feeling it on that night, you know, because they they looking at Joshua, they looking at all these other guys, they get up for that. And it, it might sound counterintuitive, but it's just kind of what it is, man. There's like, I don't know, they, they kind of let these guys into the top, you know? So, like, everybody kind of gatekeeps at a certain level. Like, you know, uh, Joe Joyce, it took him forever to get the Joseph Parker fight because – you know, that was like Joe Joyce was on that outside. He was on the outside, you know what I'm saying, trying to work his way up. And that's just boxing, you know what I'm saying? The hungry people, you know, they get that break, you know, and then they, they work their way in. But, you know, why don't Jared fight somebody that's also hungry? You know, instead they hide behind F.A. And F.A. kind of takes care of whoever Jared can't actually handle. Um, and that's my opinion on it. Yeah, you mentioned there about the uh, Wilder fight, possibly at the beginning of August on the um, first Riyadh season show over in the US. And I think that took a lot of people by surprise because it only comes a short amount of time 
after Wilder's scheduled to fight Xilei Zhang um, on the June the 1st show. What, what do you make of that? I mean, even if Wilder wins that, is he going to be up for getting straight back into training camp for Jared Anderson? I mean, I think it, it might be a good publicity thing. You know, with um, His Excellency Turkey El Sheikh, I think he's a guy that makes things actually happen, though. So, like, you know, he's putting his name behind it. He wants to see it. Um, and it's because it's been gassed up to him. You know, if I was his best friend, I could be like, yo, man, this is the best thing in America. Trust me. And people would he'd be like, really? That's what everybody wants to see in America. No, it's not. You know what I'm saying? They keep trying to force this kid on us. They keep making him the main event. You know what I'm saying? It might be too soon for him, but, you know, I'm not trying to be a hater. I'm just saying <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so, like, eh, you know, they, they've made a call. They shot directly to the top. Look, there's no harm, no foul if you lose the water, even if you get knocked out, because that's what he does. Um, you know, this kid might not be around for boxing much longer, you know, so that's kind of what I make of it. It's like, OK, let's let's just throw him at the very top real quick in a, in a realm he doesn't belong in. Like some of these things just don't make sense, man. But but that's the sport. It's not a linear sport. It's a very grimy and, you know, you know, upside down type of thing sometimes. But then if Wilder loses to Gilles Zhang uh, on June the 1st, he probably won't then get that fight with Anderson. That leaves an opening against Anderson, surely, on the US card. Do you think you might get the call? Uh, you know, that'd be a long shot. You know, I, I definitely uh, plan to say my piece about it to where they know that I'm in the running. Um, but, you know, Jared said he wants big money fights, and that just means big names. Um you know, not possessing the name, you know, like top rank, what they do with him is like they they catch him like walking his dog and they post that on Instagram and they like, look, everybody, Jared's walking his dog again or Jared's getting arrested or whatever, you know what I'm saying? So he's making headlines in his own way. Um, you know, I don't have that type of backing. You know, it, it, it just sounds like I'm too dangerous to, to take. It's like you invest all this to a guy and then you get him slept. Like, what's the point in that? You know, so I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, I'm a. I, ain't nobody else seemed to say his name. Like, yo, why ain't these guys? I, you know, it was like kind of a respect thing in the beginning. You know what I'm saying? It's just like I would kind of bring it up if I brought it up, but like, I don't hear nobody else. You know, jumping to get in there. Like, you just tweeted out you wanted somebody to to come and handle him. Ortiz might have said something, but that was about it. You know, I don't see too many other prospects or top guys saying, okay, I'm up for that. You know, the world can think what they want to think. You know what I'm saying? It's my job to go in there and prove them wrong. If he is largely unproven, I think most people would agree with that. Why are top rank so sold on him and making him the, you know, American hope of the heavyweight division? Well, you know, what I've come to learn and the truth about boxing is it's a money game. You know what I'm saying? As much as we want to love the sport and just do it for the sport you know he's a big cash investment um you know check it out the olympian richard torres isn't getting that type of push and i mean we all come from the same class um he doesn't you know he's fighting as he's fighting but he's not even getting this you know whatever this little star power they they, they think this kid has and i don't know um you know so maybe that's just my own piece on it you know bob takes a liking to what he takes a liking to, I guess. And, you know, it's the business. So, so you know, if they want to do that, you know what I'm saying, I, I just feel my peace about it. Now, while I've got you here, as you said, you've been in lots of the camps. You're clearly very articulate as well. So I need to ask you for some breakdowns, predictions on some of the big heavyweight fights coming up, starting with the one only a couple of weeks away now, undisputed, first one in the four-belt era at heavyweight. Usyk, Fury, who's going to come out on top with all the belts? Yo, again, it's it's a very tough fight, but Fury is, he's right now he's searching. Like I said earlier, he's going to have to really get into his bag because this is a fight that he wasn't necessarily up for. You know, he would have loved to have, you know, sailed off with, you know, it being him, Joshua, and uh, Wilder at the top. You know what I'm saying? But you throwing this, this, fucking conundrum and you got to deal with it now you know so um i think stylistically Usyk brings those variables that make it a 
very, very difficult night for Fury. Um, you know, and just off of everything that's been happening, all the like mental warfare and stuff like that, Tyson Fury is a very strong guy mentally, but you know, so is Usyk, and he's a sportsman at the highest level. I think I've I've just shifted in favor of Usyk. Um, you know, and I always said it would be a very tough fight, but I'm I'm favoring Usyk right now. Um, you know, and I I just hope the best man wins, and then like these belts start moving around again, so guys can start you know coming up the ladder. I'm talking of people on the ladder, or at least near the top of the ladder. June the first, two weeks after that, we've already kind of mentioned it in passing. You've got the five versus five Frank Warren against Matchroom event, which is under uh, uh, Baturbia Bivol, of course. But the two heavyweight fights on there, you've got Wilder Zhang, which we've already mentioned, and also Daniel Dubois against Philip Hergovic, which could end up being for the vacant IBF title, depending on what happens in the first Fury Usyk fight. What do you make of those two heavyweight fights on the same night? Yeah, oh man, you know what? Like I say, they don't do it any bigger when it comes down to events, when it comes uh, to, you know, Saudi Arabia. Um, Riyadh season is just a massive beast in the sport of boxing. Um, yo, these are amazing fights. You know, I don't know what water truly is going to bring on the night. Um, stylistically, it's a better matchup just because I believe he'll be able to land on Zhang, but then Zhang will be able to land on him too. And and we've seen his incredible power. Um, you got two Mack trucks, you know what I'm saying, bulldozing straight at each other. Um, one of them just has a little bit better balance when it comes to Zhang. I think he's a more balanced fighter. As we've seen, Wilder just really struggles to settle into the ring. Um, and then with... Uh, I, I still don't know who I'm picking. I would actually lean towards... Uh, Zang just slightly at the moment, just because, like I say, I think he has a little bit more roundedness to him. Uh, and that's kind of been Wilder's downfall as of late. Mm. Um, and then with uh, Daniel, man, I'm, come on, man, I'm rooting for Daniel, man. I've, I've spent a lot of time, you know, they offer me opportunities to come to the UK. Um, you know, I, I like him, I like his dad. I love what they're doing right now. Yeah, Hergovich hit me up, asked me to come spar. Like, I didn't know, like, bro. How you gonna hit me? Ask me to come spar you? Like I don't know who you fighting, man. Yeah, I know. I'm I'm team Dan over here, man. Come on, Dan, do your thing, brother. We we rooting for you over here in the U.S. Um, we want to see you get your lick back. This dude's always talking about sparring, like as if that mattered. Um, and yeah, Hergovic, man. Yo, if anything, you know what I'm saying. Hit me up, dog. If if Dan fall out the fight, don't ask me to come spar you. Don't ask me to come spar you. Yeah. Do you think he did that because he knows that you're close with Dan and he, he might get some information? Do you think that's his his plan? No, no. I mean, stylistically, I would say I'm the one, you feel me, um, about Dan's size, about his dimensions. Um, you know, a completely different fighter. Um, but, you know, I'm aggressive. I don't back down. You know what I'm saying? I get off when I need to get off. And, I mean, that that all travels. They see me. I'm in multiple camps. You know what I'm saying? I don't... I don't know what his thinking is behind it, but you know what I'm saying? Like, like I say, I, I understand he's in a position. He's been in a position for a long time, but like, you know, if we take away some of these things, I start to wonder, like, what have these guys done to like truly, you know, be, I don't know, like separate themselves. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like it's so, it's such a thin margin at the top and yet he has won these fights, but you know, I don't feel like I'm too far off. So I can't be out here, you know, being cool with everybody. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and unfortunately, it just don't work that way. You know, I need to get my foot in the door. I need to worry about myself. And it sucks when you go out to go spar people, man. It's like, oh, we're changing the time again. Guess what? It's 6 o'clock now. Guess what? It's 8 o'clock. Yo, nah, man, if y'all want to spar, I damn near spar you for free. Just come to Vegas. Everything's here anyway. You know what I'm saying? You probably wouldn't even have to pay me. If y'all really want to see me that bad, yo, pull up, man, and I'll give you a couple of days. But if you want to, you know, try to lock me down in your schedule, I just hate it, man. I'm so over that. I'm over that. It's my turn. With that in mind, and people wanting you not just for sparring, but potentially for fights and promoters out there and so on, what's the best way of finding you on social media and how can they get in touch? Yeah, definitely. Check me out at um, Dreamland underscore Milton on Instagram. And then that's also Dreamland Milton on Twitter. Um, you know, I'm more heavily on Instagram. I try to 
check on Twitter. I just really, I'm not a Twitter person. I know there's a lot of stuff shaking on Twitter though, but but mainly I'm over on Instagram. You can check me out over there. And if you're if you're a promoter watching this and you're legit, um, feel free to hit me up and I'll I'll pass on with his permission uh, Jeremiah's uh, cell phone details as well. Mate, really appreciate this. Um, yeah, hope you get a fight in the book soon um, and we can catch up again. Uh, but yeah, hope it all goes well for you. You've always been really good for your time. So fingers crossed. Danny, man, hey, I appreciate you, man. I also just want to, um, you know, give a special shout out to my guy, Artie, who passed away recently. Um, there's some information on that, you know what I'm saying, also on my page. But, uh, you know, just got to be careful in the sport of boxing and in any combat sport out here because it's a very uh, real world with real consequences. Um, so, you know, just want to take this moment to give him that shout out on your platform. But thank you for having me. Um, always appreciate your time. You know, I think we had one of our first interviews together. I swear it was like one of our first like major ones. I was like, oh, snap. Looking back on that, man. But yeah, it's good to catch up with you, brother. Well, we'll keep it going. We'll keep the pattern going. Really appreciate it. And yeah, let's, uh, let's catch up soon. All right, brother. Peace. Take care.